anyone watching these recordings will be very confused because they always begin in the middle. Right. So we're going to start off. We're going to be doing a variety of wet on wet. We're going to start doing, we're going to do some color on just blank and we're also going to do some color on color. So when we're doing a color on color, we need to make sure that we're working on top of paint that's already dry. So the first thing we're going to do is really simple. We're just going to paint a couple of circles, just a dry, a, a, wet, a, a wet on dry wash, just so that we have something that can dry and that we can explore putting color on later. So standard procedure, I'm going to wake my brush up. I'm using a medium brush, a number eight. I'm going to wake that up in my water. Give it a good swirl around. Knock off some of the excess water there. Want our brush wet, but not dripping. And then I'm going to pick any one of my colors. I think I'm going to go for this rather jazzy blue. And same as we've done a million times, just load that up. And just going to do a couple of a couple of fairly light circles that we can have dry and that will then be something for us to practice on. Very rough. What are they going to be? Sort of blue boulders, maybe. Or over here, maybe there's a pile of some mysterious blue substance. There we go. then maybe I'll do one in another color. Maybe rather a tall shape this time. So once we've got those, we're gonna set those to one side. We're just gonna let those dry out so they can be something for us to paint on. And now with that same brush, what I'm going to do is we're going to <clears throat> try a couple of times just painting water, nothing but water onto a, a blank bit of paper. And then we're going to practice adding in some paint while that water's still wet. And we're going to try that with a variety of different amounts of water because <laughs> we can choose, of course, we can just put a thin amount of water on, we can get a thin film over it, or we can really chuck a whole lake of water on there, get it real, really puddle, puddle wet. So we're gonna start off just with a gentle film. So I'm washing my brush, and then I just want to swirl it in my clean water, tap out some of the moisture, but really, really the brush can be wetter than we'd normally allow it to be. So we're just painting with water here. I'm just gonna pick a blank, a blank bit of my page, and then I'm just going to lightly brush water onto it. And we want to get a fairly fine, even film and what it helps to do here is to look at it from a very low angle. And you might be able to see the light catching it. And if you can see the grain of the paper in these little speckles through the water, that's about the, that's about the texture we're going for. So I've just made a little area that, like that. And now I'm gonna wet my brush and I'm gonna get a fairly dilute color. I think I'll go for this dark green, but of course we can go for anything we like. And then I'm just going to try dropping it in, just like that, just no pressure at all, end of the brush, drop it in. It's like these little fireworks start appearing and we can arrange them maybe in a, in a little S curve. Maybe I can pop some in and then move them around a bit. Maybe I can smudge or pull the pigment around I'm just gonna have a practice of that. Just look at the different gradients and shapes we can create. If maybe we want more in one bit, maybe I want this bit to be the darkest bit. I can just tap, just tap with no pressure at all and drop a little bit more pigment in there. I hope it's showing okay on my webcam, but you should be able to see, you can get these really subtle sort of cloud-like effects. And maybe it'll sort of splay out a bit and branch out like tree branches. Maybe it'll be more blurry. And then I'm gonna try getting some quite concentrated pigment, maybe a different color this time. Maybe I'll get this blue and work into the, work into the pigment a little bit more there, get something slightly thicker and just try dropping that in.
So once you've had a go with that, I'm just going to have a look at the feel of that and the texture that it makes. And now, having tried just that thin film of water, what we're going to want to do is to chuck a great big pond of water onto a little bit of paper just to see how that makes it different. So when we put on our first bit of water there, we could still sort of see when you look sideways on and the light catches it from a low angle, you can still sort of see tiny little dots. You can still sort of see the grain of the paper coming through the water. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load so much water on that actually the surface tension holds it in one smooth sort of puddle. You can see I'm really going to town on this little area. And then when you look at it sideways, it should look like one unbroken sheet of flat water. And if there are any bits where the grain is showing, we just top them up with a bit more water and check it from a very low angle so that you can see reflections in it. And once we've checked that that's smooth, like a mirror, we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to see how it changes. We're going to see how different it is when there's that much more water so that the paint doesn't get influenced by the grain of the paper. And I'm just going to chuck a colour into that. <coughs> and we can tap repeatedly on one area. We can really drop lots of pigment in and make these big clouds that swirl and get larger. Could get a sort of marbling effect here, a sort of smoky looking effect. <clears throat> now that we've had a practice with doing that on some plain paper, with any luck, these shapes up here should be nice and dry. So I'll just wait a moment to make sure they're nice and dry. And then I think I'm just going to do the same thing that we did before, but with our shapes. So I'm gonna load my brush with water not a huge amount at this time. And I'm just going to apply water very gently, no pressure at all. We don't want to wake up this paint. We just want to get a layer of water on top of it and check that we've got a good consistency. Following the outline of my shape, making sure it's all full of water. And then I'm going to add some shadow. So I'm going to add some shadow to one side and to the bottom of this shape to make it into a sort of 3D object into this little blue boulder. So I'm going to get the same shade of blue I was working with before. I just drop some blue in. And I'm going to look at the way that that works. It's a sort of different way to create those gradients that we've been doing. Make them look a little bit more sort of smoky, a little bit smoother. Maybe just work, pull that pigment out a little bit here, even it out a bit. It's so fluid, it's so willing to run around. We can take it where we'd like it to go and get a sort of three-dimensional shape like that. And then I think I'm just gonna have a play with that technique. I'm gonna try doing that, different sorts of shading like that on my other shapes in the same way, just painting water over exactly over the shape and then dropping in pigment to create shadow. Always remembering no pressure at all when we're adding water. Don't want to wake up the paint underneath.
Once I've added in the pigment and I just want to move it about without adding more, I might just rinse my brush off, dry it a little bit, and then just use that slightly moist brush just to pull that pigment around like that. So once I've had a go with that, I'm just going to wait a moment so we can all finish off. I'm going to get this paper out of the way a bit more carefully than I might do otherwise, because there's a lot of water on it. I'm going to get myself a fresh sheet. And I've mentioned we've got a lot of water that we're working with. And so for that reason, I've said, you know, I've got a personal preference for taping down my bits of paper. If you don't, that's all right. But I think since we're working with a bit of water, if if you're not using masking tape, it might be an idea just to keep the piece of paper on the pad, just so that it can be a little flat, just so that we avoid the paper bending at all. And now while I tape down my bit of paper, we can have a look at our picture, and have a think about some, some ways that we can use what we've just learned to get those shadows.
Okay, so we're just going to have a look at our picture now. And I can really see two colors that we can work with. First of all, we've got these sort of smoky shadows here. Is, is, that, is that the texture of paint? Is it light? We've got these sort of smoky stone textures all on this off-white of the ceiling here. And then also on these walls, either side, these yellow walls, we can see we've got some sort of discoloration. And that looks like sort of water damage or something, doesn't it? Or different, different <coughs> plaster or something, but we can get that feel of that texture. We can get those smoky clouds of color with the wet on wet we've just been doing. But of course, first things first, you know I'm really spooked by the sight of a blank canvas, so I instinctively want to get down our lightest colour so that we can begin our picture. And I think that's going to be the sort of base off-white that we've got here. It's a huge amount, really, because we're going to start off ignoring all these ribs and vaults and things, just getting down this big central background of off-white. And for that, I reckon we're going to want to use our white with our battleship gray. So I'm gonna get my palette ready. I'm gonna use this big three quarter inch uh, house painting decorators brush. I'm gonna wake it up. And I'm gonna start by putting some white, getting a lot of white and putting that into one of my palette spots. Of course, we're going to want a fair amount of this stuff because we're going to be doing a wash over most of our paper. Are we adding grey as well at the moment, Felix? Uh, yes, I'm just I'm just putting in quite a lot of white because we want a lot we want a lot of this colour and it's easier to add a little bit of grey to a little bit of white than keep on adding white. So I'm just doing the white first. Okay. I'll probably start adding. Yes. Yeah. I'm just wondering. I can't seem to get up an awful lot of paint from these little blocks. I don't know why that is. If you if you really really try. Um, sort of pushing the bristles in like that, right, right, okay. pushing the bristles in and getting quite flat like that so that the paint is really drawn up into the bristles. Okay. Okay. And then we just drop it like that into our palette. And again, if we don't have enough in this for our, for our wash, then that's not the end of the world. We can always no. keep mixing some yeah. more. Oh yeah, that's worked. That's better. Good, good. So now we've got some white in there. I'm just going to rinse my brush off. I'm just going to drop a little bit of bat battleship grey in. Just going to drop something like that, muddle it around. I might even quickly test this on a bit of scrap paper and just check that this is the sort of off-white that I want for the background. I think I'm reasonably happy with that. So now as soon as we've got an off-white that we're happy with, it's sort of a, a bit of a, an interior decorator's job. We're just going to really starting from our top, working our way along, just covering a nice big base layer. All the areas of our picture we can see where we might need to have that off-white. Off 
sort of a wedge down the middle of the page. And already, already I'm running a little bit out. I'm going to have to mix some more of this color. I realized that looking at the webcam, it's barely visible. So it looks like I'm just miming, but I am mm. getting off white onto my paper, I promise. While we do this, another thing I want to think about is something that I've said before. I've bored you all before by saying that we don't want photocopies of these pictures. We just want to use these pictures so that we can make a picture of our own. And so looking at this picture, I think it looks a bit complicated, but it also looks a bit messy. So there are some things that I think we can change to make it look better and to give ourselves an easier job. We won't have to think about that right now, but it's good to bear in mind. So if we look towards, towards the bottom, towards the bottom of these cloisters, the ribs of these vaults get closer, to cl closer and closer together with the perspective. And I think they look pretty messy. I just think they look quite difficult to paint. So we might just take out a couple of those when we go in later. Also, we can see there's that sort of white and black mortar between the bricks of the ribs. And certainly on some of the smaller ribs, that looks like very fiddly stuff and it doesn't really add to the look of the picture. So we can maybe decide not to worry about that. As long as we get a picture that we like, using this picture as a guide, we'll have done well. When I pick the pic when I choose the pictures for these classes, I always think, well, what would what would work well for a given technique? And I knew that I wanted to do these subtle shadows you get on vaulting of buildings. But when I looked at the vaults in English and Western European buildings, they're all the same colour. They're all sandstone or whatever. And it's it's a hundred different shades of off beige or gray and I thought that would just get really boring. So this picture here is from a church in Riga in Latvia. It's something I've noticed is that the Eastern Europeans, they love painting their buildings bright colors. We don't really go in for it over here. Luckily those Latvians have painted the ribs of these vaults of these cloisters in a nice dark red so we can pick those out very easily very obliging of them. Felix, are you covering the whole paper with this gray or just like the central block? I'm not, yeah, just, just the central block. So if you, I don't know if you can see, but it's following this sort of shape here. Right, because yeah. I'm just having a think. I'm thinking what area is going to have off gray in it. And of course, there are going to be some areas that get disguised when we paint in the ribs and things, but I'm not painting it in this bit or this bit and not at the very bottom either. So it's just in this wedge here that I'm just laying in my background.
that nice back and forth motion just to make sure that we can get out those visible brush strokes and just mean we've got a nice relatively even coat. There we go. I think I'm relatively happy with that. And if there are some slight differences in our color, we don't really worry that much because this is just our base layer. We're going to be adding on all sorts of new clothes on top of it. So I'm just going to wait for a moment. Just make sure we're all happy we've got that down. This is the most boring bit, I promise. It gets better from here. Are you all happy to move on or would anyone like a, yeah. a little bit more time? I'm not sure I've completely got this down, uh, Phoenix. I don't think it's quite dark enough, but I'm going to just pop a little bit more on the top. But okay, absolutely. Well, no rush, no rush. So we'll just, we'll just wait another minute or so, just so we're all happy. Yeah, I think, yeah. Again, I mean, if, if you look at the lightest parts of our background, some parts like here are really quite light, so it doesn't really matter that much. Just as long, maybe it's a psychological thing. Maybe I like having a color of some sort down as a base for my texture, but it just means we've got something down. And now what we're going to do is we're going to have a thought, have a think, taking up our number eight brush or a similar size, our medium sized brush. What I like about this picture is that we're able to orient ourselves by the ribs of the vaulting here. So we see this one, for example, this arch here sits right bang in the middle of our image. And so I think I'm gonna start off with this as a sort of keystone for the structure of my image. As for color, I think we can be, we, we can take advantage of that deep red color. I think that this, I think it's Sierra, it's called this one here will do just fine for us. So with our mid-sized brush, we're going to do some wet on dry, just like we've done before. And you know, I always prefer to paint straight away because we just want, we just want to get our line down. Worst comes to the worst, a bit of wet kitchen roll can lift paint off much better than any rubber can. So I'm just going to have a look at the midpoint of my page with my brush, wet but not dripping. I'm gonna load up some fairly thick, fairly thick of this, of this Sierra color, just so that I can have a nice controlled, relatively sharp line. Maybe I'll just test that on some scrap paper if I want to be sure. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And now bearing in mind really looking at that shape. It's a slightly, slightly pointed arch. We've got a slightly straight line here, and then we curve down towards here. And we've already got our gray down, so we know roughly where we're going to want to end. I'm gonna start with the bottom of this rib. Arch, and I'm just going to come down like this. So starting bang in the middle of my page, maybe I'm gonna go this way. I'm going to Just get that horizontal. And then we start to curve, turning my brush as I go. loading up again when I get a bit low on pigment. And there I've just got that line there. I'm just going to do, I'm gonna roughly mirror that I think. Working with the tip of the brush. Straight at first. They're not quite symmetrical, but I'm all right with that. And then just curving down, maybe just 
smoothing out that curve as I go. And then ending at the same sort of height, just around where I've ended my block of light gray there. And then I'm just going to reload my brush with a nice relatively thick mixture of my Sierra. And I'm just gonna do the top of the outline of this arch here. So load my brush up, relatively thick. And then it's sort of, again, just keeping an eye on my picture. It's fairly, fairly thick, this arch. So I'm just going to take it about there, I think. Again, the blissful thing being that what we're after is a picture that looks good rather than a replica of this printed out photograph. So I'm just gonna follow it around and I'm gonna notice how it thins out slightly. We've got sort of a thinner rib on top of a slightly thicker one and that one sort of fades away. So I'm going to gradually thin out this outline as I move it down. Got a nice view of my head there, sorry about that. And then I'm gonna reload my brush and I'm going to do something similar in the other direction. I'll just wait a moment just so that we're all happy we've got that outline. Again, we can see plenty of imperfections here, but we don't need to worry about that. All we're doing here is sort of setting out a skeleton for our drawing so that we can orient ourselves and start filling in with that interesting shadow texture. So now I think I'm just going to do the other, the other bits of red that really define the areas of this picture. And I think it's these big ones here, these gentle sloping curves that meet up into this slightly fancy rosette here. I don't mean rosette, I mean a, a boss, I think is the architectural term. They meet up there. I'm gonna start with the one on the left, I reckon. So medium sized brush, fairly thick paint and just working like this, I'm just going to, with the point of the brush foremost, just get down that line, that gentle curve reaching up to fairly near the top of the picture. And then that boss there is just above, directly above on the picture, the apex of our arch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a cheeky little sort of guideline round. We're going to do the fancy detailing in a bit, but just, just as a marker here, I might do a little, a little red circle that of course we're going to improve when we come to add in the details. But that's just there so that I know what I'm aiming for when I do the second one round. 
but I'm going to reload my brush and do that now. And once I've done that, I'm just going to do a nice thin line just following around the other edge of these ribs here, just like this. And then once I've done that, I'm just going to wait a moment. And then I'm going to do, I'll just get them up, just these ones here. So we finish all the, all the ribs branching from these bits here, from this corbel. I'm going to do this one and then this one, just so that we can bound out our area of gray. I'm going to just have a look and the neat thing is that the very apex of this arch is roughly in line with that boss there so I've got a guide when I do this gentle sloping curve. And this is how we get used to doing proportions is just bearing in mind all the other elements. Where's that fella? Who's he near? What can I compare that with? I'm just going to do the top of that. Then I'm going to do a quick line to finish that off. Just bearing in mind that the apex of that arch is a little obscured by this whack and great one. So we start a little bit lower down. We start around here. I'm just gonna do that now.
And now carrying on with laying out our sort of skeleton, I think I'm going to do these close arches here as they sort of come crashing into the sides of the frame and swooping up either side of our corners there. So I'm just going to, again, chuck in the boundary lines for those. And we're going to fill all these using a, a wet on dry wash in a bit, but I just like having the skeleton down so we know what we're working from. And now I think just I'm going to have a look at these fellas here. And like I say, they get a bit messy, don't they, when the perspective scrunches them up like that. So I think I'm going to paint this one in. And then I might skip two or so. I might do this one and then this one in between. Maybe I'll do one at the end. But I just think that would look a little bit neater, look a little bit easier on the eye and would make things a little easier for us because we've got our framework down. I'm going to do these ribs up here and then I'm just going to do that. And there's sort of these swooshing curves that come round like that and then disappear into this big arch. Again, I'm going to work from the bottom of this arch, I think. Just starting maybe there. And again, just going to do that arch shape.
And again, I'm going to notice the way that it sort of squashes up against the wall. So it's a bit thin here. And then it gets a little bit broader. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get slightly more dilute Sierra and I'm just going to fill these in just like we've done before when we've done our washes. So the brush that's fairly wet but not dripping just get some rather dilute colour and with those back and forth strokes I'm just going to pull colour around and fill in our vaults like this. Remembering that if color pools up in an ugly way, we can just drag it around and even it out. I don't know about you, but as we keep on doing this, and as these ribs 
take shape into these great big vaults, I get this fantastic feeling of space. All of a sudden we can sort of see where this great area would be and how these big arches give us these large wall spaces. And all of a sudden where we just had this blank off gray wash before, it looks kind of weird that there's no shadowing. It looks kind of weird that in this big would be shadowy ribbed vault, the ceiling is all the same color. And so once we've finished fleshing out these ribs here, we can have a look at the ceiling in our photo and we can explore our wet on wet washes to get that sort of texture. Again, I'm not worried about getting my paint very thick or dark because we can see these, these arches, they're angled in their brickwork. So we can put down this light color. And then later on when we can, we can put some darker, some darker washes in to get the shading, to get that, that angled stone cross section of these arches. But for now, we're just doing a quick quick wash to get that base color. Bless you. Now in a moment, we're gonna start thinking about how to apply our wet on wet to get those shadows on the vaults, but I'll just wait a minute or so so that everyone's happy that they've got these arches in place.
Is everyone about there, or would we like another minute or so? I can wait for another minute. Would that help? Um, no, fine. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. In, in which case, folks, we're going to have another look at these sorts of shadows here. Because they're different, aren't they? For different arches, for different segments, as it were. So for this central one here, we've got a sort of cloud of grey here. But then it's lighter here. Maybe that's where the sunlight's striking this edge of the curved vault. Maybe that's why that's lighter. We've also got a little bit of lightness there. We've got sort of patches of white and discoloration. Then with this one here, I think that's another shadow, isn't it? That's where the light has come in like this. And it's left this bit in shadow. But then, excuse me, we've got lighter over here. And then we've got some sort of clouds of dark there. So we're going to bear those in mind and we're going to start doing our wet on wet. And for that, we're going to want two brushes. I'm going to use my big house painting brush and my mid-sized brush. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply water with the big one. And then I'm going to drop in battleship gray with my medium sized one. So I'm going to make sure my three quarter inch brush is wide awake. Get that in some water, get it fairly wet. And then I'm going to paint water very lightly. Making sure that we don't go over the lines, making sure that we go right up to these arches, but not over them. You can tell this is a precision job because I bend in against the paper and you get a nice view of my head. Apologies for that. There we go. And you can look at it from a very low angle. Get your head near the page and just check out how much we've managed to cover. Get a nice even, even amount, a bit more than a film, but don't want to create a lake on there. And then once we've done that, well, then we're just going to have a go with our medium sized brush. I'm going to start off with some fairly dilute battleship gray. So rinse it out, get some gray on the brush. And then I'm just going to start dropping the gray in with the tip of the brush. Maybe I'll get a bit more, drop a bit more in. And already we can see it's like the, it's like the watercolors are doing the painting for us. They start spreading and smoking and swirling out and we can give them a bit of a prod. We can sort of suggest, why do you come over here? Why do you go over there? But really, they're sort of doing the work for us. Wherever we want shadow, we just drop in color like that. We drop in color and then we spread it about. I'm going to bear in mind that we've got a lighter bit right up against this arch here. So I'm just going to drop in color, but I'm going to stay shy of that edge. The color can mix freely, but not go up to that edge yet.
And when we're finished with one section, we can just go on to another. Just trying to get those smoky stone textured sort of clouds of shadow.
There's quite a lot of dark gray here. So in this section, I think I might drop my gray on with my large brush. way that the pigment rushes right up to the edge of the wetted area but never goes beyond it. I always think that's slightly magic. Very helpful of it. Now, once I've done those, I think I'm just going to have a go with the yellow walls either side here, just painting in a rough area. Because as we've seen when we did our pumpkin painting, we can start off with a rough area and then we, there's always the option to finesse. I'm going to use yellow ochre, this one here, quite dilute, and just do, that, do a wash down so that once that's dried, I'll be able to do the same thing, clouds of darker discoloration to give that wall a bit of texture using our wet on wet. Did you um did you wet that yellow area first or not? I didn't. I wasn't watching. Oh no, I didn't, Sylvia. So what I'm doing here is it's what we did when we did our um our boulders and shapes and things. Is I'm going to lay down this base area of dilute yellow ochre, yeah. and then once that's dried, I'm going to put a film of water over it like we've done, and then yeah. I'm going to drop in some paint over it. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you.
And maybe I'll just chuck in some yellow on the other side as well. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I think I'm going to chuck in a couple of arches down at the bottom here. And I'm just finding things to do while our yellow ochre dries. So maybe I'll put in some of these. I'm pretty sure I'm right in calling them corbels. Corbels at the bottoms of these. Gathering up these bunches of pillars here. I'm going to start with a sort of that fawnish sort of stone colour. That sandstone colour, which I think we can get with maybe a mix of our yellow ochre and this orange here. So I'm just going to mix up a, a colour for that and just put a couple of those in. Maybe a bit of white. <clears throat> and just the base layer for those corbels there. 
I'm just going to paint in that rough shape. Ready for some darker colour to go on top. And do another couple while I'm at it. can then add with a fine brush some dark detailing. Right now with any luck this area should be nice and dry so we can lay some water on it and put in a few clouds of darker ochre sort of discoloration so medium brush loaded with nothing but water just going to paint some water on evenly, no pressure at all. Don't want to disturb that paint. And then same as we did before, gonna take some slightly more concentrated ochre and just drop some in to get some of those clouds. And folks, yet again, I see that times sped along differently to the rest of the world and it's, it's now time to end. So I'm just gonna get my camera up. So I hope you all enjoyed that. What yes. I think, I think with this, with this one, I think what we really want, what I really wanted to do was to look at how we can explore these different shadows and things using wet on wet washes, but at the same time, get a good sense of how we can get a composition together and how an image that looks quite complicated, looks like it's got all sorts of things busily going on, can actually, once we reduce it down to the proportions of the different elements, it's something we can start to create really quite quickly. This is one and a half hours worth worth of work. And we've already, I think, I can already tell the sort of smell of old stone that I'd get off my building from these dark shadowy stony mm -hmm. vaults. So before you go, I am afraid I am gonna to have to ask to see everyone's masterpieces. So if you could hold them up to the camera, please. Mm -hmm. I've got very wet and messy, I'm afraid. <laughs> you and me so, both, aren't those extraordinary? Once... Ooh. I suppose once it's dry, I can do something with it, really, because it's Abs all melted. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. Once again, most of you have outclassed me completely. Aren't those fantastic? <laughs> Very well done, everyone. Thank you. Wow. Thank you very well, much. Yeah. Well, thank you. I think you've all done a yeah. splendid job. I hope you enjoyed that. I think I'm going to finish mine off. And of course, you. you're all very welcome to as well. Um, all that remains to say is I hope you have a very lovely week. And you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.